Noah, listen. It sounds like the thunder has stopped. Could it be that the storm is over? Don't get your hopes up, dear. But it does sound as though the storm is over. Perhaps God is finished pouring his judgment out upon the earth and all its peoples. I know you are anxious to get out of this ark, but just think, God has used this large boat to save us because we have found grace in his sight. Oh, praise be to God. Yes, the storm was over. After many days, the ark with Noah, his sons and their wives aboard rested on Mount Ararat. Noah released a dove from the upper window of the ark. Look, Sham, Ham, and Japheth. The dove is returning with an olive leaf. The water must be going down. After seven days, Noah again released a dove. It did not return. Noah removed the covering from the ark. The ground is dry. God spoke to Noah and told him it was time to leave the ark. What a joyous occasion. Let us build an altar unto the Lord and offer up sacrifices of praise to him. They did, and God was pleased. He promised Noah that he would never again destroy the earth with water. God gave a sign for them to remember his promise to them. Noah, look! In the sky! Oh! God painted a shining rainbow of promise in the sky of colors so lovely to please you and I. He wanted to show how he cares for his own. So God painted a was a miracle, a matchless miracle of beauty and grace. How its splendor, wondrous splendor, spreads to all the human race. You see the rainbow with its glory eternally bends. T'was a miracle of love. And today God's still sending rainbows in the sky, showing children, little children, how he loves you and I. And oh, how he wants to come into our hearts to put put a rainbow of love in my heart. Don't you wish everyone would? I sure do. Let him put little rainbows of love in your was a nine-year-old farmer boy. He just loved animals. Can you guess what his favorite animal was? Not dogs, not horses, not even cows. Donnie loved pigs. He loved fat pigs, skinny pigs, big pigs, baby pigs, muddy pigs, just all kinds of pigs. One day at school, the teacher, Miss Mays, said, Class, Tomorrow I want each of you to be prepared to tell the rest of the class all about your favorite hobby. Donnie was all excited. Just two days ago, his favorite pig, Daisy, had given birth to piglets. And boy, was he ever proud of his pigs. As Donnie walked home after school, he and his friends discussed the subject. Donnie said, Well, Kevin, I suppose you'll tell all about your model airplanes, won't you? Yeah, I just made a new one. It's really neat. I'm going to bring it in for the class to see. What are you going to do, Lynn? I got a big stamp collection. What are you going to be bringing in, Dave? I've been collecting bugs. I have over 100 already. 
I wish I could bring in a baby pig. Wouldn't Miss Mays love that? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I wonder what Gary Greens is going to say tomorrow. He'll probably tell us how to get 20 holes in one pair of socks. <laughs> <laughs> See you tomorrow, Donnie. See you, gang. The next day, excitement was running high in Miss May's classroom. As usual, the last one to come in was Gary Green, the son of the town drunk. None of the children ever wanted to play with Gary. He was never dressed as nicely as anyone else. The boys never let him play on their softball team. That would be a disgrace. One by one, each member of the class got up and told about their hobbies. The girls showed their crocheting or knitting, the boys told about their models or collections, and Donnie proudly told about his prized pigs. One of the last to speak was Gary. He slowly walked to the front of the classroom, carrying a box. I have only one hobby. Since I have never much of anything else to do, I spend my time in the woods. God speaks to me there. In the past year, I have made all of these. Gary gently lifted out of the box three beautiful wooden hand carvings. One was a horse, one was a dog, and one was a pig. That night when Donnie went home, he was very quiet. His pigs didn't seem quite as special compared to Gary's carvings. After supper that evening, Donnie approached his father and asked, Dad, can I talk to you for a while? Sure, son. What's wrong? Donnie told him all about Gary and how he was so different, yet his hobby was far better than even his own. Dad, I just can't understand how God can speak to Gary like that, out in the woods. I mean, Gary isn't as good as we are, is he? But his hobby, his carvings made my pigs look awful. You know what, son? Pigs are an awful lot like some people. Boy, I sure hope I'm never like a pig, all smelly and dirty like that. Oh, but you are, son, but not in those ways. And Gary Green is, too. You see, son, pigs and people, too, aren't always what they appear to be on the outside. Think for a minute and try to picture a pig. What do you see? Well, I guess I see a fat animal rolling around in the mud, and they kind of smell stinky, too. Right, Donnie. Now when you sit down to supper after Mom has cooked a nice, big, juicy ham and placed it on the table, do you think of that same smelly animal in the mud? Well, no. Son? God could look at our outside just like we look at others. And he might decide we're not worth bothering with. But instead, he looks at our inside and sees what is good. Sometimes the most unlikely person to us is just the person God can use best. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah, Dad. To look at a pig, you sure wouldn't think it could make a yummy ham. I guess if God could love someone, who I don't think is too nice. I should try to love them too. Right, Dad? That's right, son. And with God's help, we can love everybody. Hello? Gary? This is Donnie. Donnie? Yeah, can you come over today and help me with my pigs? I sure could use a good friend right now. And then, maybe later on, we could go talk to God together in the woods. Sure, I'll be right over. That is if you really want me to. I sure do, Gary. Come on. are red and others green some black and white with stripes between look all around and you will see god made things different as can be some things are plain and others not some things have great big polka dots god must have liked variety when he made all the things you see some things are big and some things small some things are short and others tall. Look all around and you will 
you'll see God made things different as can be Some things have hair and some things scales Some things have fur with bushy tails God must have liked variety When he made humanity People are special, that's plain to see But there's no other quite like me Look all around and you will see God made us different as can be I must be me and you be you Each has a special work to do People are special, that's plain to see But there's no other quite like me or you We have been traveling through life. Would you like to go on another special adventure with me? Then get ready! Every day in life we have new mountains to climb and new valleys to cross. There is no time to just sit around, so hurry up and get ready to go on this new adventure. In the land of life is a great kingdom called Hearts. It is called Hearts because of the many castles dotting the hillsides throughout the kingdom. These castles are called Hearts. Each time a new person is born in the land of life, a new castle or heart is built on one of the surrounding hillsides. We have already visited some of the castles in Hearts, but there is a castle I have been admiring since the day I arrived in the kingdom. It is very different from all of the rest. Many of the castles are new. Others have fallen in and are in need of repairs. Still others have been restored. But this castle... Oh, here we are. Hey, this castle is like a city set on a hill or a light on a candlestick. It is placed right here where all who are passing by can see. What a lovely place. I must find out some information about this castle. 
Good day. You must be a visitor here in Hearts. Yes, I am. You must be weary after your long journey. Come in. I tried to be a help to weary travelers. Here is some water. I trust you will be refreshed before you leave. What else may I do for you? Madam, I have been admiring your castle. There is something about it that is so different. May I ask you for your secret? Secret? Oh, but you don't understand. Let me explain. It all started years ago, when I was born in life. I received my own new castle, or heart. My castle was different from every other castle. I later discovered that no two castles and hearts are exactly alike. Each one is special. The master planner and builder has planned each one for a special purpose. That purpose is so special that if anyone in life fails to follow the master's plan, that special purpose may never be accomplished. What a responsibility that puts on each one of us who are born in life. As I grew, there were many things that tried to take up lodging in my heart. My parents were very particular, and they taught me ways to determine if something was right or wrong, good or bad. That has been a tremendous help to me. One day when I thought I was old enough to rule my own heart, something shocking happened. Good day, sir. May I be of help to you? The time has come for you to choose whom you will serve. I want you to serve me. You must serve one of the two kings of the land. I promise you laughter, fun, and good times for a while. All you have to do is let me move into your castle. Sir, do you promise to lead me into the ways of right and goodness that my parents have taught me? That is the way I desire. Well, not exactly. But I will promise you friends and fun. Most of your fellow citizens and hearts have opened their castles to me. Why don't you just try it? If you don't like it, then maybe you could change. No, I want good and right. If you can't promise me that, I do not want to serve you. You can't move in. I slammed the door. I must say, he was persistent, though. He kept trying to get in. Did you give in? Then one day... Good day, sir. May I be of help to you? The time has come for you to choose whom you will serve. No man can serve two masters, for either you will love the one and hate the other, or cling to the one and despise the other. Today you must choose whom you are going to serve. Me, the king of righteousness, or the other ruler, the king of darkness. Oh, I don't like darkness. But your majesty, I went the way of good and right. Can you promise me that? Indeed I can, and more. All goodness comes from me. Allow me to move into your heart and we'll start a happy life that will never end. Allow me to rule every room of your castle and I promise you that goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life and you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What did you do? Please tell me. Of course. I asked him to move in and take control. Because of that decision, I have had a wonderful life. Every good and perfect gift you see in my heart or castle today has come as a direct result of that decision. I have had a life of no regrets. I have found the master builder's special plan for me. Is that the secret of your heart? You still don't understand. That is why my castle looks as it does. Others have followed the other ruler and that is why you see so many of the other castles in hearts crumbling and falling apart. Others have made the wrong choice at the beginning and then have seen the error of their way. Oh, their castle has been restored on the outside and the inside of their heart has been made new, but they will always have to bear the marks of sin while in the land of life. But to me, my castle is beautiful on the inside and on the outside. I don't bear the deep marks of sin because I made the right choice. I see. So that is your secret. You still don't understand. I have no secret. Because of the beauty of my castle, it stands as a beacon to all those who pass by. 
They see the difference. They stop in just like you have done. There is no secret. I tell it every day to all who pass by. It sounds as though someone else is here to inquire about my castle. Before you go, I want to tell you the best is yet to come. The king is preparing a new mansion for me. It is not in life, but in an eternal city of endless day. These were the king's last words to me. Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give to every man according as his work shall be. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Well, we are again traveling through life. I now see that no one can choose for you who you are going to serve. Who is king of your castle? The choice is yours. Thank you for my teachers. God, I thank you for the Bible. 